Given that DARPA is behind the development of technologies such as the internet or unmanned cars, the whole world is watching what the US Advanced Research Projects Agency is investing money in. Yes, some projects are forever strange fantasies, like plant-eating robots or self-healing building materials. But it also makes sense, because many technologies were once sci-fi. DARPA's policy is precisely that, to try to crack what everyone else in the world thinks is impossible. For example, right now, according to the agency's director, Stephanie Tompkins, there's a big focus on creating new materials. Stephanie, quote, envisions a future in which seemingly unsightly everyday objects will be made from materials with properties that now seem completely impossible, end quote. Tompkins cited solving the supply chain problem as the second key area of focus, and the key here, DARPA believes, is the ability to produce what you need where you are. For example, a project to extract water from desert air, an attempt to make medicine from incredibly simple raw materials, and two programs trying to produce food, in the first case from plastics, and in the second from air and water. Which project do you think will be more successful? But what is DARPA doing now? Is the agency involved in the artificial intelligence race? Does it plan to conquer the moon and protect us, or maybe even conduct an offensive in space? Yes, yes, and yes, but not only that. Right now, DARPA is funding a ton of science and high-tech developments, and in this video, we'll cover the agency's latest accomplishments and new projects. I'm Nick, let's hit it. But first, another giveaway! Watch this video to the end to find out the rules of the contest. $50 certificate will go to the winner that we'll announce in our following videos. So be sure to subscribe and keep an eye for updates. Okay, now, let's get it. Let's start with the most interesting part. What is DARPA doing in the field of AI? First, it's looking to develop AI and autonomy applications that the military can absolutely trust. The current generative models available today, which gather and make up facts with equal success, are clearly not suited to do analytics or make decisions in situations where lives depend on it. So, DARPA is developing large language models to suit itself, and the agency is being helped in this by several large companies, including Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, and Anthropic. Beyond the obvious things like processing and understanding natural language to perform tasks like secure computer coding, decision making, speech recognition, and prediction, there are a number of high priority projects. First and foremost is highly autonomous professional AI for specific cases such as piloting. For example, the autonomy and AI project that DARPA is testing with the Air Force is piloting an experimental version of the F-16. In February of 2024, for example, the Vista X-62A model was flown for more than 17 hours cumulatively by an AI system alone. True, there were pilots in the cockpit ready to take over the controls if necessary. Vista X-62A is a modified F-16D Block 30 piece Marble II fighter equipped with avionics of the Block 40 version and developed by Lockheed Martin together with CalSpan Corporation. Incidentally, the agency is requesting $41 million to continue work on developing intelligent autopilots under the Air Intelligence Reinforcements or AIR program in 2025. With this money, DARPA will seek to automate tactical control tasks, turning junior pilots from low-level tacticians into high-level mission commanders. Also, the AIR platform will allow drones to perform missions with minimal human oversight. The agency also places great importance on the development of artificial intelligence aimed at recognizing deep fakes and any manipulation in the information environment. In our weekly news releases, we can constantly see how fast neural networks are developing, creating realistic videos and spoofing a voice from a 15 second recording. In addition to cool applications for creating movies and other entertainment content, such algorithms can create incredibly believable deep fakes. And today, companies developing such AI in parallel are actively developing algorithms capable of recognizing AI-created content. And the military seems to be its top customer.
The next direction of DARPA's work in the field of artificial intelligence is safe and fault-tolerant algorithms for critical infrastructure management. This is pretty self-explanatory. IT systems of government agencies as well as public and private enterprises in defense, energy, fuel and nuclear industries, transportation, and finance sectors must be protected. Also, in the event of a security threat, information gathering and decision making must take place in the shortest possible time. And that too is a challenge for artificial intelligence. Its speed is one of its major advantages over the human brain. And of course, DARPA pays a lot of attention to defensive and offensive cyber tools. Many projects here are classified, but some have had their veil lifted just a bit. To find new solutions and talented developers, the agency often uses competitions. One of them was a two-year challenge to develop an artificial intelligence system for quick search and elimination of vulnerabilities in critical AI cyber challenge code. The challenge was to develop artificial intelligence systems to quickly find and fix vulnerabilities in critical code. They must guarantee the security of software used in both military and critical civilian facilities. The time frame to find a solution was two years. Some of the teams will participate driven by their own enthusiasm and the chance to win a $20 million prize if they make the top list. These are usually research teams and institutes. And some have gotten DARPA funding right away. These are small businesses. Seven of them can also get a prize, but only in the amount of a million dollars. Anyway. Sounds pretty good. The event is supported by the same four partners of the agency, namely Google, Anthropic, Microsoft, and OpenAI. You know, the usual suspects. In general, as the agency's leadership says, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and autonomy are used in some form or another in about 70% of DARPA's programs. One high-priority AI program for which DARPA is also requesting impressive funding for next year is Rapid Experimental Missionized Autonomy, or RIMA. It aims to improve commercially available drones and provide military drones with a subsystem that enables autonomous operation. In other words, it will give remotely piloted drones new decision-making powers. The agency is asking for nearly $14 million for this, though last year it asked for just five. But those are still modest numbers, considering the role drones play in modern conflicts and the role they will be able to play once they have AI decision-making capabilities. Another program called Autonomy Standards and Ideals with Military Operational Values, or ASIMOV, is designed to test whether autonomous weapons developed for the Department of Defense meet its own safety and ethical guidelines. This program, for example, tests autonomous weapons software in complex scenarios that require ethical decision making. And for the next year, DARPA has requested $22 million for this instead of the same $5 million last year. Ethics for AI is indeed extremely important, especially if we recall the experiments where large language models were given the freedom to make any decisions and they calmly proposed to launch a nuclear strike against rival states in order to get purely economic gains. Another AI-related program that will get solid funding in 2025 will be access in AI and human-machine symbiosis. And if you've imagined a killer cyborg with artificial intelligence, this isn't it. Or it's not it yet. Or journalists haven't gotten to the bottom of the project yet. But open sources indicate the essence of the project is to create chatbots capable of realistic and positive dialogue. But not only that, it's also supposed to develop large pre-trained models capable of suggesting legally defensible actions to deter an adversary, and to use only real sources without hallucinations or fudging. This is where we remember how reputable lawyers in the U.S. have gotten themselves into some hot water by deciding to discount their work on the newly sensationalized GPT. In the military, credibility is important, and that's what DARPA is asking $13 million for. Another program will study large language models like ChatGPT to see how well they perform in abstract reasoning. It should also develop methods that will enable transparent and logical communication between humans and AI models and DARPA is requesting $9.5 million for this. By the way, if the agency succeeds here, explainable AI could become the next big and worldwide technology developed with DARPA funds. 
like the internet. And by the way, we talked about the agency's developments that became successful commercial products in our previous video. Link in the description. Check it out. Moving on, one of DARPA's long-standing projects is a program to develop tactical vision for soldiers using augmented and virtual reality headsets. The idea is good to see what is hidden from the eyes or what you cannot see with normal vision. But there are a lot of twists and turns here. Starting with what many of the first Apple Vision Pro owners experienced, namely dizziness and nausea. And then there are the possible cognitive attacks, among them flooding tactical vision systems with unnecessary or false information which leads to increased stress on the cognitive system, provoking the same nausea. Also, when infiltrating the network you can distract soldiers, start a panic or confuse them. And also track them and their condition with the help of an eye tracker. In general, there's as many threats as advantages here, and all these problems are yet to be solved. By the way, the project was initially entrusted to Microsoft and it created MR VR hold lens headsets for the military. They were widely advertised as an extraordinary breakthrough, but then internal reports were leaked to the press in which soldiers said they hated the headsets. The army then ordered Microsoft to redesign the glasses. But when it came to paying for this redesign, Congress only allocated $40 million for it instead of the requested 400. It was recently announced that the hold lens glasses no longer make soldiers vomit, and that's progress. However, it's shocking to many that this gazillion dollar project boasts only that. But what else is DARPA interested in? Space, of course. Here, the agency's plan are simply grandiose. Not only does it plan to build large objects in orbit of the Earth and on the Moon under the NOMAD program, here engineers hope to create concepts that will allow to build directly in space objects that can withstand maneuvers, eclipses, damage, and thermal cycles characteristic of the space and lunar environments. Also, DARPA wants to build a thriving commercial economy on the moon in the next 10 years, for which it's studying the energy and communications infrastructure. By the way, the timing of the project coincides with NASA's plans to organize a permanent presence on our satellite. The most unusual project in this direction, in our opinion, is the construction of a railroad on the moon. The contract for this idea went to Northrop Grumman, now the company is faced with the task of determining the interfaces and resources needed to build a lunar railroad network, make an estimate, a list of technological and logistical risks, develop prototypes for conceptual design and architecture, and decide how to build the railroad with the help of robots on the moon. And of course, think about the problems of laying out the railroad line, building its foundation, laying the tracks, and dealing with ongoing issues such as inspection, maintenance, and repair. Interestingly, the contract amount has not been disclosed. Well, and of course, DARPA can't help but be interested in weapons in space. Moreover, here the agency wants to get new ideas and solutions. The agency has already announced that it is looking for talent to develop new concepts that will allow the U.S. to gain real space superiority. By the way, U.S. Air Force defines it as the degree of control in space of one force over any other force which allows it to conduct its operations at a given time and place without prohibitive interference from ground or space threats. In other words, DARPA wants ideas for new space-based weapons that can protect U.S. satellites from damage, disable enemy systems, and launch their own attacks. There's no chance of learning more about it as the project is part of the agency's Bringing Classified Innovation to Defense and Government Systems Initiative, otherwise known as BRIDGES, which aims to bring innovative companies together with government agencies to solve complex problems that exist in the classified domain. The program could potentially include a wide range of concepts from ground-based missiles designed to destroy satellites to space-based lasers designed to blind the optics of enemy satellites and others. Other approaches include radio frequency jamming cyber attacks on ground stations, ground-based lasers aimed at satellites, orbital throwing weapons, and even more exotic concepts such as space-based chemical sprays. All in all, 
Hello, new space race. And what about the more down-to-earth projects, DARPA? Well, those too are actively being pursued. For example, we already told you about Northrop Grumman's creation of the long-awaited first prototype of the Manta Ray robotic underwater glider in our previous news video. Also in 2025, thanks to DARPA project, the US Army will receive Airfish 8 screen gliders from the Singaporean company SD Engineering, and it's an amazing machine. Hovering supernaturally close to the waves, the Airfish 8 navigates through the water three times faster than a boat and 2.3 times more efficiently than an airplane. It will have a top speed of nearly 100 miles or 170 kilometers per hour. The craft will be able to carry two crew members and either eight passengers or up to a ton of cargo. This is a seaplane with an internal combustion engine that does not require special infrastructure as it will operate on ordinary moorings. And its 500 horsepower V8 automobile engine is fueled with ordinary unlead petrol. As for land, DARPA plans to develop real UFOs from old science fiction, vehicles that can vertically take off and land anywhere as well as hover in the air. And if you were thinking of something similar to a Chinese air cab, that's not it. The vehicle for the agency will have to be of an airplane type and reach an incredible for EVE tall cruising speeds of at least 460 miles or 740 kilometers per hour, flight altitudes between 2 to 5 miles or 4.5 to 9 kilometers, and have a payload of at least 1,000 pounds or 454 kilos. It will have to stay in the air for at least 90 minutes and fly over 200 miles or 370 kilometers. Four candidates have been selected for this project. They are Aurora Flight Sciences, Bell Textron, Northrop Grumman Aeronautic Systems, and Pasechki Aircraft Corporation. They will be allocated $15 million for the first phase of the project. The selection of the winner will be made in the coming months. The first prototype is expected to fly in 2027, with the completion of the test program set for 2028. DARPA is also investing in new wireless power transfer technology to significantly extend the flight time of drones. For this, the agency has allocated $10 million to Raytheon. With this money, the company has two years to develop energy networks that could keep drones in the air indefinitely. The contract is expected to allow Raytheon to create an onboard relay design to create webs capable of collecting, transmitting, and redirecting optical beams. These webs will transmit energy from ground-based sources to high altitudes for precise and long-range operation of unmanned systems, sensors, and actuators. The use of lasers for energy transfer is more in its infancy today but it has major implications for the military. It will not only help create quiet drones of much larger size and payload capacity, but also help support the operation of remote military bases and groups. Of course, covering all of the agency's current projects in one video is simply impossible. In general, DARPA's annual budget request for development for 2025 is almost $4.5 billion, and that is just what we know. How much skunk project is going on in places like DARPA will most likely remain unknown. And now time for the giveaway. $50 certificate to the lucky winner who will be chosen by a random comment picker and of course follows the rules. Here they are. A. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. B. Answer the following question in the comments. Siri to Apple is what to DARPA? Let us know in the comments what you think. Subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more news from the world of high tech.